A lot of my clients are children or grown. Mm. For me, I had a lot of guilt feelings because I felt like I wasn't the mother I wanted to be because I was busy trying to take care of my mom. Gotcha. I felt like I wasn't as good a daughter as I wanted to be because I was trying to take care of my children. So I was very much sandwiched in that. On the other side of it is getting to be mother and daughter. Yeah. And once they're in a community, you go and you take their favorite treat. For my mother, it was the Frosty from Wendy's. <laughs> and you show up with the Frosty. That's, that's right, that's, that's, <laughs> I love the Frosty. It's so good. <laughs> One of the hardest things to deal with with an adult child is an aging population. Uh, parents who are getting older, needing to move, and not sure how to do that. In this episode, Marlene Jewett's gonna talk to us about how to take care of your elderly parents and what they need to do when they transition out of their home. Let's go. Hey guys, this is Charles. Uh, we have a special guest today, uh, Miss Marlene Jewett, who is a senior real estate specialist. Mm -hmm. uh, has been in the real estate industry for 23 years, which is amazing. <laughs> and we've, I'm biased, we've known each other for a while, and I figured she'd come on and educate families regarding what she does and how to help families through that process, which it can be really traumatic sometimes. And so, uh, thank you for having, thank you for coming on and just I'm hanging out with us. Here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. One of the things that um, Marlene, she's such a sweet, sweetheart, but one of the biggest things we I do want to mention is that she is four years straight winning specifically a magazine, the Five Star Professional Real Estate Magazine Award, which is voted by clients. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So, which Texas is awesome. Monthly Magazine. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So, I'm real proud of that yeah. because my clients had yeah. to do it for. Customer service. <laughs> That's awesome. No, we appreciate. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you for having it's, me. It's going to be fun. So, so if you don't mind, just tell um, everyone about who you are and why you got into being a senior real estate uh, specialist. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm Marlene, mm -hmm. and um, I had when I was very young. My mother got sick. Mm -hmm. Lost my daddy when I was nine, and mm -hmm. I'm an only child. Mm -hmm. My mother got Parkinson's disease when I was seventeen. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I had no idea what to do with that. Wow. So I picked in and I became a caregiver at 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And then time went by and mother, you know, did well with it for a while. And fast forward and I had three small children and now it was time for her to need to move away from home mm -hmm. because it became like Alzheimer's and to try mm -hmm. to handle children and handle mother and lift her and do all of those things was very, very difficult. So um, the hospital said, really, you know, mm -hmm. need to find a, a placement place for her. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult for me to make that decision. My mother, you know, things were different back in those days. Mm -hmm. um, now the communities are so wonderful. But back in those days, everybody said the nursing home. Mm -hmm. I can remember my mother saying, I'd rather die than go to the nursing home. Yeah. And so I would probably have never even taken her to the community, except the hospital said I had to. Wow. So we started looking. Um, and once we did that and found a place for her, um, then became, you know, selling the house. Mm. Um, and that was hard, you know. I didn't know how to go about any of that. The house hadn't been taken care of for so mm. long. Mother hadn't been able to take care of it, so it had all these things that needed to be done. I didn't know where to start, and I just knew there'd be someone out there who would have all of right. those resources right. for me, and I was wrong. There wasn't anyone. I looked ev everywhere. So it turned out that we ended up fixing up the house ourselves. Wow. Um, had the kids with us every night for about six months Ooh. of going over there every evening and working on the house. Um, and then when it came time to sell it, sold it myself. I wasn't a realtor, but I sold it myself. And when it came time to close, I was in Dallas at what used to, was a really big title company in Dallas mm -hmm. called Hexter Fair. Okay. And we were closing there. And I, you know, I didn't know how special David Fair was, the owner of it. I just know I was complaining to him because I was saying, <laughs> listen. I thought there'd be somebody to help me with all this. And he said, hey, maybe you need to become that someone. So that's how I ended up wow. going into senior real estate um, and learning lots of things along the way. Wow. Um, for me, I, I was happy once it was all over, said and done with, because I got my relationship with my mom back. I hadn't been able to have that because I was so busy. Trying okay, to we have everything. to eat and yeah. we have to take a bath and we have to get to the doctor and all the fun part of, you know, mother-daughter things yeah. that we would do were gone. 
So it, it worked out well in the end, but gosh, getting there was really tough. Wow. Oh my gosh. Like, like that, that's, that's amazing. Like, number one, that's a crazy story, right? That's like, you went through every, you, went, you probably saw all the bad stuff too, <laughs> like while you're doing it. And then on the flip side, having to make sure mom was placed in a place where you felt comfortable too, mm -hmm. you know, like that's a big deal. That was really tough. Yeah. And because she had um, the dementia that was setting in, I remember driving all the way out. I didn't know where to start. Mm -hmm. And somebody told me that there was a good place out in Gunter, Texas. And I'll never forget driving out there. It seemed like I was going to another <laughs> country. I, you know, she didn't, that's not where she ended up being. Oh, I, thought, good, yeah. I was like, there's no way I could go out here and visit every day. It's at the other end that's of the true. world. Yeah, because you're driving back and forth mm -hmm. just to go see your mom. You mm -hmm. know, that, that's far. Now we have so many places yeah. and so many options. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. but that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> so, so tell us, what does a senior real estate specialist do? Well, we help the seniors transition. Mm -hmm. In many cases, we have a designation now. So I was doing this way before there was a designation okay. for doing this. Uh, and now there is a designation. And where a designation might tell you things that you would already kind of know about mm -hmm. seniors, such as if they're downsizing, or let's say they're gonna move to another house. Mm -hmm. And you know, now they're gonna need a house that's smaller and they're not gonna want to take care of a yard that's not mm -hmm. good for them. And going upstairs is not good for them. But what I do is having all of the resources to not only help them in that case, but most of my work is done with seniors who are moving into communities. Okay. okay. So that means we have to sell the house and, and they're going actually into a community. And there are lots of things they may need in mm. order to do that. Estate sales mm -hmm. um, and having the resources for those sales for downsizing and wow. doing everything like that. Um, maybe they need some extra benefits. Uh, maybe that's possible, you know, if they have served in the service, they may be eligible for extra veterans benefits. Oh, wow. And those, that's really hard to get on your own when you're trying. Yeah. So knowing that the resources of people who are really good at helping them do that. Nice. Um, people who are good in elder law. Mm -hmm. So many of the times, especially there, there's certain schedules you have to follow if you're going to have someone like my mother who's mm -hmm. going to end up with dementia. You know, you have timelines on when you can handle those things mm. or if a power of attorney needs to be put in place and knowing the people mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. um, and how how it's best for them to sell their house. If their house is like my mother's house was. It was, a, it was rough. <laughs> we, we either need, I, I have a great contractor now who's low priced who can come in if we want to get top dollar, but then there's the option of, hey, I just really like to walk away from mm. this and maybe there's an investor out there. They can take it. And yeah. And so there's the option of, you know, selling it for cash in two weeks and you leave all that stuff behind or, oh, wow. or me bringing in someone and me overseeing, you yeah, know, them yeah. coming in and, and taking the stuff away for tax receipts mm. or me overseeing um, the contractor. If the contractor, you know, needs to be brought in mm -hmm. to get the house ready mm -hmm. and so that I can take that off of the family. So the family can worry just about getting their loved Less, one into yeah. a community and they don't have to have all those different, they don't have to maneuver where they're going. I can mm. say, look, look, here's the person that we have for this. Hmm. All we have to do is call out and reach this and let's get you over there and wow. start having fun with mom again and let and me let, let me just yeah. deal with this over here. All right, if you're watching this, thank you so much. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe this video. It helps, I think, the algorithm a lot. And uh, I hope this helps and educates you well. So let's keep it moving. So so what if, like, that's a great point. So say, for instance, my my uncle or my aunt, right? Mm -hmm. and I come to you and say, how does that process work? So I come to you and say, hey, uh, I, need, well, I need help with my uncle who needs to move. Uh -huh. like, how does that process work if I was to come to you? Like, You'd come in, then we would sit down and we okay. would talk and say, okay, he needs to move. Okay. Where it, is he needing to go to a community level? Okay. You know, and then we kind of talk about where he is with that. If you hadn't already done that part, okay. because there are different options for that. Okay. Does he need independent living where he's just going to move and be with some other folks? Let's say, let's say he needs an AL. Okay. If he needs assisted living, okay. then we, you know, we got to find him a spot if you haven't done that already. Okay. We haven't. And <laughs> I'm not sure what well, to do. I can help you. I have some great ideas with, with where he could go. Cool. Where okay. he could go for that. 
Um, and sometimes it depends what he needs. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's say he needs a program to do that because the house needs help and he doesn't have the money right now okay. to move into the community. But there is a program that would allow him to go ahead and move into the community, pay for all that downsizing, pay for any work the house might need. Wow. And then that just gets handled at closing. If that was his case, then I would know which communities have a program like that. But I, uh, I consider myself the expert in helping to sell the home. Wow. So okay. although I may at first be able to say, hey, and steer you in the right direction of some communities, if I really feel like, you know, you need someone to really thoroughly go th about this, yeah. then I'm going to send you to another professional, who, professional who's a placement professional. Gotcha. Okay. To and they don't charge. Process. You know, it's free. Mm -hmm. They are paid by the community. Wow. But they are going to know all the communities around let's say that your uncle needed mm -hmm. Medicaid or, mm -hmm. you know, there's certain criteria, they're going to know that. Okay. And I only refer to someone who's actually going to take them out there or take you gotcha. out there, not visit, someone visit who's just- Visit the places and make sure you in, like see what the places looks like and everything. Right. Not That's actually cool. just say, oh, here's this place over here. Why don't you go take a look? Yeah. You know, someone who's actually going to be involved like I would be involved on the okay. home selling in. So if my uncle needed like to a state, like an estate sale. Do mm -hmm. you help with that? Or what, what does that process look like? So I have a number of companies that cool. come in and do that. So there are options for them. Okay. Um, different estate sale companies have different criteria okay. of the amount uh, that you have of furnishings and accessories and what that will bring. So some of them have a $5,000 minimum. Okay. Some of them have a $7,000 minimum. Um, and in, in some cases, you'll find out that maybe you're better off if you don't have that hmm. to just have the, the um, different people come in who'll take it for donations. Okay. And then like me. different charities. Or, right. Okay. And I have some great ones who do that. Mm -hmm. And then I oversee that so they don't have to be bothered by oh, wow. it. And then they get their tax receipt. And sometimes that's actually a better thing. Easy, so, smoothest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's, is it quicker or how does that? It is quicker, um, and different estate sale companies have different ways they do it. Some of them, it's kind of like a glorified garage sale, maybe. Mm. Some of them now will do it online, where okay. they come out and they put things in different batches and sell them online. You know, I think they feel like maybe it has a, a farther reach that way, and maybe okay. they get more money okay. for the items. Like, a, so, what's it called? Facebook Marketplace or something? Uh, you see that a lot? Yes. No? Uh, well, you know what? That's a really hard thing for families to try to do. If families <laughs> want to do that, I mean, that's great. But trying to do the one item at a time thing. That's be, tough. Yeah. That's, tough. that's, that's tough. pretty, that's pretty tough. Oh, so wow. Wow. I always encourage them, you know, to have an estate company come out if that's what they want to do and let them tell them, you know, okay. what, what they feel they have. Wow. But I've actually had a client or two who who chose to go that route and actually came out without anything. Oh wow! At the end of it, so that's pretty frustrating. Right, because you did all that work and then nothing. Right, because you didn't get past the minimum. So wow. Yeah. So what? How does that? How do you help families through that process when they're when they're getting things either bought or donating, and it's like memories tied to those things, like. How do you walk families through it's that? It's really hard. And that's one of the things that I actually love doing. Oh, wow. So, yeah. and I spend a lot of time and a lot of nothing but cakes. Hey. <laughs> we sit down. We are Shameless having... plug. <laughs> nothing but cakes. There we go. <laughs> See, if we I have like work or homework, <laughs> we need snacks. That's true. So, usually we have that. That's and we cool. sit down and we visit. And they just, you know, that's one of the things about anybody moving from their home. All they yeah. have all the Thanksgivings and Christmases and the smells, the aroma, the candles. And, and they need to talk about that. You know, yeah. they need to tell you their stories. And I love to hear the that's stories. Cool. I, you know, I love being able to do that. And for some of the things, if they can't, it's like, oh, I just don't know how I'm going to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. But it's something large that they have to. Mm -hmm. You know, then there's ideas of being able to take certain pictures. You can even take a collage, you mm. know, put together some words that describe that and come up with a way that they can at least wow. still have that, you know, as a memory. Yeah. And also the fact that they're trading material things for new memories with wow. people. Mm. Because they get lonely in their house and it's going to be so great wherever they go. They're going to have other interactions. Mm -hmm. 
So if I can help them realize that these are things, and yes, and they were wonderful things that they had, but over here they're going to have new friends mm -hmm. and new interactions and whole new memories are going to be made. Wow. That's kind of what wow. I try to do. That's really neat. I think, I think the hardest part is too, like, I, like, like you mentioned, like the pictures, right? The, the massive albums of pictures and mm -hmm. photos, like a lot of times it's like, how, what do I do with all those, right? Like how do I, how do I create memories mm -hmm. or save those memories, mm -hmm. you know? And I like what you said that putting like collages together and, and digital, you know, yes, they, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, digital memories and photos. And right. That's cool. And they can have the digital picture frames now that they can put, you know, that roll the pictures that they can really see good. wherever they're going. Wow. And those things can constantly and right. you, you probably see more in a, in a little frame than actually flipping through the, and then the plastics fill, peeling over and everything. Right. Yeah. And oh, you have to, wow. you don't have to dig those out all the time, you know. You oh can my just, gosh. So. That's cool. So once, once everything is, I guess, sold in the house, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is done. What's the next step? How does that, how does that Well, it depends work? what route they're going. Okay. If they're going the route of the house needs work okay. and we're going to try to sell it for top dollar, yeah. because some of them, and you know, this is all they are going to have to live on. Yes. And so they need to get the most they can for their home. Then it's a matter of getting the contractor or whatever okay. to come in and do that work. Okay. It's always good for them to be gone and just be enjoying their new place. Mm. So now I put on my hard hat. And I come in there and Get I have work. I have those people who are great that can do that very reasonably priced. That's cool. And they just come in and they get started and I'm going by and I'm overseeing it when they get finished. Now wow. we're ready for putting some decorator items in there and taking wow. some pictures and getting it on I can it see you market. like on HGTV. That wouldn't, that, <laughs> wouldn't that be so cool? Like, like a senior, is there one like that? Is there I don't know. That would be pretty cool. Like a it senior would... HGTV like special, specialty show. Mm -hmm. That'd be, sorry, I just want. I had to say that. I was like, I was like, when you were saying that, I was like, oh wow, I just thought of like Chip and Joanna or something. Or and these seniors that I deal with yeah. are just the best. I mean, I consider them the best generation, mm. and they have such wonderful stories. I mean, mm. I could listen to the stories all day long. Yeah. So it's really fun That's to interact cool. with them. That's cool. And I and to hear their stories over the years, they're so different than the stories that we have now. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're seeing so many different things happen over the course of, like the going from the first car, mm -hmm. right? Then now from a, from a plane to a train to like technology to an iPhone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like see so much in that small amount of time mm -hmm. from newspapers to now TV shows to that's and that's something that's a little different with the seniors. Mm. So when you go out to meet with them, if you're dealing, you know, with their children also, yeah. then a lot of that can still be electronic. And of course, that's one thing that we have that's today true, that yeah. makes it really easy for e-signatures and and the children can do that that way. But if it's actually I'm sitting down with just a senior, they're still very much into paper. Yeah, and because you feel like okay, I'm, it's done. <laughs> And they like to read everything oh, wow. because they're kind of different than we are yeah, these days. Yeah, you know? yeah, they like yeah. to sit down and they, and so wow. I kind of have to know my stuff when they're taking apart the contract and wow. asking about each you know thing wow. because they you know that was very important to them in their mm. day to go through everything mm. and know all of the details. Yeah. So once the house is fixed up and good to go, how does that process work after that? You know, in terms of letting. The senior know what's ha like. How does how do you keep well, them involved? Well, every or? week I'm I'm touching base with them, cool. and um, you know, and, and if it, it requires me to go over for something, we have more snacks. Thing that's <laughs> a, that's a whole part of this. Snacks are very important. That's, that's so, good. Yeah. So you yeah. know, we're going by and we're sitting down and we're talking and and you know, touching base on where uh -huh. we are with the process. Uh, the selling process after that goes really easily um, and it's still a really good market. I have people mm -hmm. asking me that right mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. the market's still really good. If you're a seller, you're in great shape okay. because we're still low on inventory. Okay. okay. Um, and so usually it's there's no time before we're we're getting it under contract wow. and then becomes, you know, being able to slowly explain to them the different options of the offers, mm -hmm. you know, because we have cash offers, we have conventional loan offers, mm -hmm. we have these different things and they need to understand, you know, in which order we put these as far as what's a, the better of the offers. Okay. Um, and we're in a multiple offer situation still some now. So when wow. we have them coming in, mm -hmm. then it's explaining, okay, 
This offer says it's this amount, but when we factor this in, this is what we've got. So wow. it's explaining and getting them to that point. And it's having good teams. Um, mm. My person who's in title, she has been doing this for over 30 years. Mm. And she loves seniors a lot too. That's so cool. instead of them worrying or having, so many people will say, okay, well, if they can't come to the title company, they'll get the mo notary, you know, the mobile notary. Mm -hmm. And not that there's anything wrong with the mobile notary right. route. It's just that they are just there and understand we need to sign here rather than being able to, to explain. To, to walk through. Right. Yeah. And so my title person will come to them wherever That's they are. Cool. So whatever community they're living in, you know, she physically That's comes cool. there. Yeah. And so they can have that relationship too. That's awesome. So. Because it's, I mean, it's years and years of them living in that home and then them giving it away. That's cool. That's yeah. cool to see that. Wow. Wow. So once that's done and everything is, the house is sold, right? Uh -huh. And they've picked the, the specific op option. Like, what does that feel like? How do, how do they, how does, how does someone, how do you celebrate with them? But also at the same time, it's kind of like a, I'm sure it's mixed emotions. Right. right. Well, we definitely have a celebration at that point. But by that point, usually they're settled and, Into, okay. and you know, uh-huh. And they've accepted it and they've already been in their community for a little bit and they've made some friends. That's and cool. so things are starting to feel okay now. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, th I think by that point we do pretty well. And uh, I'm always keeping up with them mm. from that point on because I don't have my parents. Mm. So now I have all of these adoptive parents. Yeah. Over. <laughs> and that's one of my favorite parts of the jo job, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's the best bonus, the hugs are the best bonus anybody can ever get. Yeah. yeah. So on holidays, I'm uh, stopping by to see them and to, you know, to visit with them. That's pretty cool. I, I saw one a couple of weeks ago. I dropped off something for Valentine's Day. She goes, gosh, I wish I had another house to sell because I had... <laughs> And I was like, you don't have to have a house to sell for us to be friends. Yeah, we're we're going to we're, we're yeah, hang out. <laughs> that's, that's cute. That's awesome. Uh, that's pretty cool. So so now you've it's neat because your story is really amazing because you went through that process, right? And now you're in that process and you're hel helping other families. What are some key things or some some advice you would give someone who's now considering this process for their loved one? What would you... Or some, what were some things that you would recommend for them? It's hard. They they are probably stuck also in the in the feeling of I don't know that my parent wants to do this. Hmm. Maybe it's like I'm having to be the leader to get them to do something that they yeah. don't really want to do, and ha maybe they have feelings of guilt and things like that. Yeah. For me, one of the best things, and it, I could you couldn't have told me this when I was going through hmm. it was on the other side of it is getting to be mother and daughter. In that case, it was my mother. Mm. Getting to be mother and daughter again. Was I being a daughter? Yes. Um, I, because my children were small and a lot, mm. of, a lot of my clients or children are grown. Mm. But for me, I had a lot of guilt feelings because I felt like I wasn't the mother I wanted to be because I was busy trying to take care of my mom. Gotcha. I felt like I wasn't as good of a daughter as I wanted to be because I was trying to take care of my children. So I was very much sandwiched in that. Mm. Uh, and I, I think probably a lot of these children have that same feeling. Right. Um, you know, I'm trying everything I can do for my mom. And now I feel like I'm, you know, I'm choosing for them to go somewhere and maybe I should be sticking in there more yeah. and should be doing more. But the caregiving part is so much of the things that you have to do. Yeah. You now you're with them, but you're saying, okay, you know, we, we need to get our pills and we need to take our yeah. bath and we need to eat now. And no matter how, if you're the most patient person in the world, every now and then, you know, you might be grumpy yeah. and then you feel guilty, guilty. Yeah, if yeah. you get grumpy. Yeah. And once they're in a community, you go and you take their favorite tree. For my mother, it was the Frosty from Wendy's. <laughs> and you show up with the Frosty. That's, that's probably, that's, that's, <laughs> I love the Frosty. It's so good. <laughs> I go in, you know, and we yeah. would play games or yeah, yeah. now they have wonderful entertainment yeah, and you yeah. go in and it's, you know, you do your nails and it's those fun mother daughter things yeah. that you should be enjoying. Yeah. You don't feel, you don't feel burnt out from caregiving the whole right. time. 
you can almost relax. Exactly. Wow. So I try to, to help them to understand that. And I feel that probably since I was in that place, I can be real empathetic about yeah. that because I don't think there's anything that they could tell me that I probably didn't feel myself. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I hope some somehow, you know, I'm able to make that feel a little more comfortable for yeah. them. You mentioned something that was, I just learned this term recently, the sandwich generation. Have you heard of it? Mm -hmm. I didn't know the, what, I knew the, I knew that it was, I knew that people are in that, but I didn't know the term sandwich generation, mm -hmm. which it happens so much. Like people who are in their 50s and 40s, they're taking care of their, maybe their children that are coming into college or mm -hmm. right around that age, and then their elderly parents. But you same, same, same situation. Mm -hmm. You're torn between two different responsibilities, you know, and, and I think if, if, I love what you said about it's now kind of giving back that role of being a daughter, being a son, right? And not being that caregiver full fledged, mm -hmm. being working with a real estate agent like yourself or others to help process that, go through the house sale, and then also give them an opportunity to have a new life. I think it's pretty cool, you know? And I didn't know that, you know, like it's neat to hear that. And I know? have to throw a plug in there yeah. for my child too, because, yeah. you know, I felt badly with my children mm -hmm. going through that, but my oldest daughter, mm -hmm. that's the career she's made is working yeah, with wow. seniors, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and she's done a wonderful job of that and I couldn't be more proud of her. Yeah, yeah. And I was telling her one day how proud I was of yeah, her. Yeah. And she was like, but mom, you know, you're part of the reason That's of cool. why I'm doing what I do. Yeah. And so that turned what I thought was maybe being a very difficult thing for them. And it turned around and it was a positive yeah. and made me Their feel great. Path. Wow. Yes. That's cool. That's another thing. I was like, when you're saying that, I just think about like, you know, like the guilt. You mentioned guilt. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of families, they they have that guilt feeling. But when you, I think when we think about it, right, it's, me and my brother were talking about this in another podcast. We were talking about life humbles you. You start needing help as a baby, and at the end, you need help as an adult, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like, it's hard, but the reality of it is you need other people, right? And I think as, as a baby comes into life, you need help <laughs> changing diapers and feeding, and then at, at the end of life, you need help too. And I think like, your specialty and just so many others to help rally around families to let them know that they're not feeling like alone in this journey is massive. Because you mentioned like you felt alone when you didn't have anybody. <laughs> and how am I going to want someone to treat me yeah, someday? Yeah. You know, how am I going to want someone to be there for me? And, yeah. and when I don't totally understand the way I used to, yeah. and I might need a little more time explaining to yeah. me, you know, aren't I going to want someone to be patient and be helpful and hold my hand through that? Yes. Yeah. I yeah. am. So last question, I was thinking about something. Key people that someone needs mm -hmm. when they're starting this process. A senior real estate specialist, who's another, pe another person that they need to consider, like making sure that they're in this process? Well, you know, at the very beginning, mm -hmm. it's home health. Okay. Because yep, yep. when, before they get to me and then they're in their home, mm -hmm. you know, that can keep them aging in place for yeah. a while yeah, yeah and so now let's see the first step usually for mm -hmm. them is they want to go to independent if they can my mother was beyond that okay. point because okay. i had been you know taking care of her for a while but usually when you have the seniors and their first their first step is wanting to go to independent mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to accept the the room size and everything you're going to yeah. even if they need assisted that's kind of sometimes the families choose to do that just because it kind of eases them into that and once they're in independent living then having home health mm, can help them there yeah. to age in place longer before 100%. they have to make you know the next yeah. step and to help them acclimate. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And then they're you know to get things in order. The mm -hmm. senior attorneys, you know, there weren't okay. the elder attorneys back when I needed them, and now they're wonderful ones, mm -hmm. you know, who can help them with all the different paperwork. Because there's certain things that you're going to have to have in place, whether yeah. you want to or not. Like your power of attorney, there's a point at which you can't do that anymore if yeah, you're going to have true. a loved one like mine who's going to go to a dementia po part. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to have all of that put mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing to okay. have that 
you know, set up. Um, so those are a couple of your key players, key players. Okay. you know, that you're going to need. That's good. That's good. And I think whoever helps you uh, with the real estate or whatever it is, whoever is helping to guide you, they should be someone who is putting you with the person that they would want to take care of themselves mm. or their loved ones. And mm. um, I was mentioning that for me, if I'm going to have to have a surgery and it's not my normal doctor, I'm going to say, okay, so who do you, you want right, operating? Yes. If it's you, who do you want yes. doing that? Yeah. And that's what I think, you know, uh, whoever is helping these families should be doing that with who they would feel comfortable taking care of themselves or their loved one. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Any last advice for families that you would recommend or anything you can think of? Gosh, that's a that's a hard one. Yeah. Um, now, I just think just to know that it's going to be OK, you mm. know, to reach out and let somebody help you through this. Don't yeah. try to do it on your own. Yeah. Just reach out and let somebody, you know, hold your hand and, and get you through it and get to the other side and then just enjoy mm the time that you have left with your loved one, mm, you know, that's good. and for, you know, for couples, I, th I think uh, one of my favorite couples, mm. I oftentimes see the kids and their parents, but there was one particular cu uh, couple and they moved here and they were young and he, he was really interesting. He had had a background in criminal justice. Mm. And he moved here. He was going to have a polygraph company and he had a surgery and things turned south and he was bedridden from oh, that point wow. on. So he had the home health, mm -hmm. and then from that point, you know, they, they needed to go in a community, but I, I remember how worn out she was, and she just wanted to keep trying to do it on her own because she thought that was her place to mm -hmm. be able to do that. And just to see how they were once everything got settled, I, you know, they will be dear friends forever, mm -hmm. and she was so wonderful and so sweet to me afterwards. But once they got somewhere where he was being taken care of more, her whole life came back, wow. you know, and she could enjoy things. And yes, it changed. He ended up having to have the next level of care and, uh -huh. and things changed. But, you know, just reaching out and finding all the resources because they qualified. He'd mm. been in the service. They qualified for great VA benefits, benefits oh, that, wow. yeah. you know, made a difference. Uh -huh. And, you know, they every single thing that I think I have in yeah. my toolbox, yeah, yeah, yeah. they took advantage That's of. Cool. And it was just such a wonderful feeling to see how that came out for them. So I just say, don't be afraid to start the process. Yeah. Just reach out. Yeah. Doesn't hurt to just call and talk to somebody mm. and then you'll find out that That's easier cool. than you thought. That's cool. That's <laughs> cool. That's awesome. So if if anyone's in the Dallas area, how do they reach out to you? How, what's the best way to contact you? Well, my phone number is 214-566-6935. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sweet. We'll and put that on the, on the bottom there. Yeah. yeah, you can call. I love to talk and visit. Cool. So just call and ask me whatever you need to ask me. Cool. And my name is Strange. You can email me too. Okay. That Marlene is M-A-R-L-A-I-N-E. -N -E. And I'm going to tell you a little story mm -hmm. on how to remember that. Mm -hmm. I. My mother's youngest sister's name was Marjorie Elaine. Elaine, same, same Elaine, the same way. Marjorie Elaine. And when she was little, she couldn't say it and smeared it together. Mm -hmm. So it came out Marlene. <laughs> and my mother thought that was cute and gave me the smear together name. Oh, wow. So that makes it easier for people then to Marlene. remember. It's M-A-R-L-A-I-N-E. Mar yep. Elaine. J at KW.com. So they can cool. email me too. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marlene. This, this was fun. We hope this helped you guys. Please feel free to like and subscribe. And um, if you have any questions for Marlene, reach out to her. Thanks for having See me, Charles. Yeah. It's been great being this here with fun. you. This is fun. <laughs> That's awesome.